Hello, this is Steve Barton. Today we want to talk about sign plates. I have a number of those uh, sign plate sign bars, but when it comes to using the sign bars in your vise, uh, there's some number of uh, problems that can arise with them, uh, and we want to talk about those and some of the solutions. Now here's a, a three inch uh, sign bar that will, a co-worker years ago made for me. It's a unique design. He ground the radius here ground the radius here. Uh, let's see if I can get that up. Ground radius here, ground radius here. I've never checked it to see how close this was. I would never use it for a precision uh, work anyway, just for some uh, stuff that I needed a tight space to work with. And this is uh, supposedly uh, made three inches from center to center. Some of the issues you may have with this, if you start wearing this, and then that means you've got to regrind both uh, those surfaces and hit that three inch uh, right on the money again. But the bigger problem you have is when you're using it in a vise and you got a curt vise, you got this great big old gap in the middle and you can see I don't have a whole lot of room. If I want to use a, a larger angle, you can see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm about bridging the gap right there and uh, there's not a whole lot of room. Well, I have another sign bar, and this is a four inch one, between center to center. It actually has rolls on there that you can uh, replace or regrind. You just have to make sure that they're the same diameter. Some of the uh, problems you have with a sign bar like this is when you tighten this screw or this screw over here against that, if you get those too tight, it will actually uh, cause uh, the top surface up here to deflect. So, so you got to be careful uh, how tight you put those screws. Now that being four inches, uh, it makes it a little nicer, but still yet, I'm, I still got this center gap that I, uh, I'm limited to where I can put the sign bar. Uh, also, because I have, uh, I believe it is a uh, uh, let's see, what was that? I measured it the other day. Yeah, one inch and about 50 thousandths. I have one inch and 50 thousandths on the thickness. It doesn't leave a whole lot of room to clamp your part in the vise. Uh, if it was a lower profile, uh, you can see what happens. If, if I'm one inch and 50 thousandths here and I get two inches on my vise, uh, even with low angles, uh, it doesn't leave me a lot of room and very limited where I can uh, clamp. Well, you can come and you can get into some bigger ones, uh, like so, and you can see uh, this is a sign plate. It actually has a bottom. This is five inches from center to center. Uh, if you're wondering what this diamond is on top, I actually use this on the surface grinder for dressing real precision angles uh, on the surface grinder. Uh, the thing works really good. One of the most precision ways to put uh, an angle on your wheel on the grinder uh, is to use something like this. And uh, so this works out pretty good uh, in certain applications, but again, it's pretty useless when it comes to vice work. It's already taller than your jaw. And as you raise that up and down, uh, there's no way to really hang. Well, then we got the situation where you can come to the big boy. You got a 10 inch and you got the same thing with uh, now five inches is 10 inch between center to center. Uh, but you got the same problem. You, you rise up and you're above uh, your jaws over here because I got uh, some quarter 20 tap holes. I can actually yeah, I just had a piece of stuff on there. Uh, I can actually uh, bolt stuff down on that or I have another part I can go and pop in here and it actually turns into a sign vise and so that one I can use for some light duty stuff in there but, but uh, the last two uh, sign plates that I brought up I mainly use those in the grinding applications and uh, so what I want I want to have a small four inch center to center sign plate and I want a low profile. And so I drew something up on Fusion 360 and we'll look at that in a minute. And so this week's video is going to be uh, producing uh, 
uh, the little sign plate that I uh, drew up. And when we do that, uh, we're going to show a lot of the build, how to uh, put some, uh, you'll see uh, when I show you the drawing, I'll put some of the radiuses on. I don't have a turntable, but I'm going to make a kind of a, a little uh, pivot fixture where I can put some nice radiuses on some parts of that here in a minute. Also, the other nice thing that we'll be able to do, we have a, a number one more jig grinder over here. And this will be the first video where we actually will use that to grind the hose out. I uh, will probably not get into that uh, in the part one of this video to be a multi-part. Uh, I got to actually uh, make a collet or buy a collet. This is a quarter inch collet. I'm going to have to have either a 3 16th or an eighth inch shank. And I'm going to have to pick me up uh, one of the boards on uh, mandrels uh, that I can grind with. And so that will probably... Uh, be in next week's video when we get to that point, but we'll get as far as we can. So right now let's go and let's look at uh, the Fusion 360 and I'll show you what we're planning on making. Well here's the design that I have on a sign plate. It's going to be a low profile. Uh, the radiuses I talked uh, about that we're going to swing that we're going to do in this video are, are these radiuses right here. Radiuses right here and in here. So this is going to have a top and bottom piece and the nice thing about this, even with the gap in between uh, uh, the vise in the middle, uh, this this part right here will span on both sides of it and so it uh, will allow me to position it in the vise. A uh, future version that I'll be using, uh, I will actually extend this part of it out uh, probably a couple inches so it will actually give me a little bit more movement uh, between the vise, but this this is the first version that I'm using uh, that we can try it out. And what's interesting uh, for the rolls that go in between uh, the four inch center to center, I'm going to use uh, just quarter inch dowel pins. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, one of our subscribers, Eric, I believe his last name is pronounced Iceberg. Is Isberg? Not sure if I'm killing that name or not, but. Anyways, uh, uh, he was watching one of our other videos and uh, he talked about the dowel pins that I was using and that uh, he uses uh, 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 the dowel pins and he likes to keep a generous supply around. They come in handy. Well, I'm, I'm kind of like Eric in that. I, I like the dowel pins. I keep them handy. And what's nice about this, if I use uh, for the pivot point and uh, the measuring on the dowel pin, they're 6062 Rockwell already. I can take and measure them out. Uh, they may vary a tenth or two, but you know you get a box of a hundred and uh, you can measure and get identical pins That way you don't have to grind them and what we'll do is we'll make them a, a Just kind of a, a thumb fit in there so that it's not distorting anything But but they're enough that they'll stay in there, but at the same time uh, they will uh, uh, be replaceable if you find any wear or anything eventually or something happens so you can just pop them out and pop a new one in. The other thing uh, that will be nice about having the pivot point with the dowel pins, any of the fixture work I got and I want to use this top piece with, I can stick one pin in a fixture uh, and if that is a pivot point I can set this up on angle plates or different things and I can actually incorporate uh, a sign bar set up within the angle plates and stuff so I got a lot of ideas that I, I want to go with this. Uh, but in the design of this, uh, I always like to put screw holes in the top. These are 1032s and they work nice for uh, not uh, clamping parts down, but they work good for uh, making stops. If you got, uh, you know, multiple parts and you want to get that angle that you're cutting on it uh, the same all the time, you can slide it up against the stop and uh, you position that. So uh, here's a, we'll just get this uh, front view of that. Uh, put the slide bar together. Here's where it's assembled. Uh, when the pins are in it, uh, that's what we're going to have is a pivot action on that. So what we're going to do uh, in this video, uh, we're going to uh, put those radiuses on. We're going to make a little jig fixture. One of the things that we'll also do in this, uh, I made this out of one uh, because I wanted to heat treat it right here with the torch. I will actually draw it back with a torch. Uh, 
it would be a better process if you can and you can afford it to send them out uh, the heat treat uh, that you have done on the outside many times is going to be a whole lot better than what you can do internally unless you uh, like Brian and uh, you get your heat treat ovens uh, uh, eventually we hope to have some of those I've, I've done a lot of heat treat in the past I've done it with torches I've done it with ovens and uh, they're just a handy thing to have. And when you start getting into some of your uh, different type of steels, like your CPMs, uh, your DC-53, sending that kind of material out can get quite expensive. So anyhow, one is a very easy uh, to heat treat steel. You just need a torch, you need a quench oil, uh, and then you uh, just shine them up a little bit. And by applying the heat and applying it slowly for the drawback, you can watch different colors, a, a light brown straw color, a darker brown, uh, it'll get down to a, a, a purple and a blue, uh, and then it will come back uh, to another straw. Those different colors represent different temperatures, and so you can tell just by what color you have what rock well you're going to end up with on that. And so we'll cover that as well. So uh, uh, we have to... Uh, uh, make a little setup plate uh, to spin those uh, uh, radiuses on. We'll cover that a little bit in detail, so we'll get back with you shortly. <laughs> 